Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thank you for tuning in and uh, welcome on board Waypoints Aviation. We're back in our Airbus A320 cockpit today and uh, we're in Dubai International Airport, my favorite uh, parking stand, which is Foxtrot 9. And uh, today we've got a fun one for you. Today we're going to show you how to handle an engine failure in the Airbus A320. Now generally, an engine failure sounds like a pretty bad thing to happen for an aircraft, and it is. But with the magic of uh, technology increasing and the Airbus being such an advanced aircraft, an engine failure doesn't necessarily have to be a game changer or, you know, the end of the world if you know what to do and if you know how to follow these procedures. Now, as a as a little side note, I want to I wanna let you know that the Airbus 320 is, for all intents and purposes, meant to be flown by two people. Um, given that I do not have a first officer, my first office today is a MacBook. That's an M1, by the way. Um, so I'm going to be doing this alone, but I'm going to role play pilot flying and pilot monitoring. Uh, so the way we fly the Airbus 320 is we split the workload between two. Pilot flying is exactly as it says in the name. The pilot flying is responsible for physically flying the aircraft using the side stick and maneuvering the truss levers to control the engines. And when the autopilot comes on, it's the pilot flying who operates the uh, autopilot as well because his job is to fly the aircraft so anything and everything to do with maneuvering the aircraft either by manual control or by autopilot it's his uh, area of responsibility now the pilot monitoring his job or her job is to assist the pilot flying so the pilot monitoring will handle the radios he's also going to be taking care of the flap levers the landing gear and basically if there is an emergency situation do the ecam actions and uh, to to help the pilot fly and secure the aircraft and get the you know various procedures done um, to be able to uh, operate the aircraft safely and bring it back in for a landing so in today's scenario we're looking at an engine failure and this engine failure is going to happen right at v1 so V1 is the point of no return on a runway. Once you reach V1, which for us today is 149, all right? So once you see 149 over here, that's it. You cannot stop this aircraft on the runway. Whatever happens, you have to take it airborne and deal with the problem in the air and, um, and, and uh, solve it. So, so that's, that's, uh, it's quite critical and there's some very important steps that we need to make sure we're following to make sure that we handle the aircraft properly. Because as soon as that engine fails, the first thing we're going to have to do is stabilize the aircraft and then rotate, take it up into the air safely under full control. And then what we can do is once the aircraft is stabilized, we can get the autopilot on to help us out and reduce our workload. And then we're going to get some ECAM actions over here uh, with the airplane telling us exactly what it needs to do or what it needs us to do to secure the failed engine and to bring the aircraft back in for a safe landing. So I'm going to explain all of that to you. All right. In just a moment. So grab some popcorn, sit back, relax, and uh, let's get right into it. All right, so let's talk about the engine failure. Now, this is a twin engine aircraft, all right, which means it has two engines on board. Now, when you have an engine failure in a twin engine aircraft, automatically your workload goes up because what's gonna happen is, let's just say engine number one failed, all right? The only engine producing power right now and trust is the engine number two. Now, what that would mean is that because engine number one is no longer providing trust, engine number two, which is on the right-hand side of the aircraft, is going to want to pull the aircraft towards the side of engine number one because there's only power from the right pushing out. It's not balanced to keep it straight. So the way we fix that is by using the rudder pedals, these little guys over here, which I'm moving with my feet. So 
let's just say engine number one fails all right remember this rule dead engine dead leg all right so if engine number one fails my left leg is dead all right the left engine has failed therefore the left leg has also failed so the only input i need to give is to the right to compensate for that extra power coming in from the right hand side and straighten the nose of the aircraft keeping it straight down the middle of the runway okay so hopefully that explains it and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get the electrical hydraulic pumps going and because i want to show you the flight controls as you can see as you move the rudders there you go you see the rudder moving so when you apply when you apply pressure to the rudder you're moving the big rudder panel at the back so in the in the event that engine number one failed i need to push the rudder towards the good side the good engine to compensate for that extra thrust that's pushing us towards the dead side all right and once i get up in the air it's going to be very difficult for me to keep on pressing the rudder and what's important is i need to keep the the rudder which is this little dash underneath the uh, the yellow triangle that needs to stay in the middle stay coordinated so i'm going to do that using the rudder pedals but once i get up in the air then i can use what's called the rudder trim which is right back over here now the rudder trim as you can see is now set to zero it's right in the middle but in the event of an engine failure what we can do is we can trim the rudder physically trim the rudder into that direction to kind of keep it there which helps the pilot not have to apply pressure on the pedals anymore because you've trimmed that control surface into the direction that you want it and the way you do that is you see the rudder panel here it's currently set to zero and you have this knob which goes right nose right and nose left so let's just say engine number one has failed that's the dead side so i want to trim to the good side which is towards engine number two so all i do is hold this down and now I'm, I'm inducing units of rudder and as you can see the little blue needle moving i'm now trimming the rudder so when i stop there that's about 10 units of uh, rudder input now the rudder is actually permanently set to 10 units to the right which will stop me from having to give that much rudder on um, on using my feet and I can actually take my feet off the pedals relax my feet make sure it's coordinated and I just keep playing with the trim until I know that this is coordinated perfectly and then I'll be able to secure the aircraft and fly it more effectively all right so I'm going to show you all of that and to reset the rudder back to zero you just have to push this button and the rudder trim will come back to zero all right so that's how you work the rudder trim now all of this is going to happen pretty quickly so I'm going to do my level best to um, explain it to you while I do this alone and um, so yeah let's uh, let's get the aircraft uh, up in the air and, uh, and and get going now before that it's all about being ready for the situation you know we, we, we prepare ourselves all the time for what we're about to encounter so let's uh, let's brief this takeoff all right now our flight plan today is taking us from Dubai to the little island of Bahrain which is up in the uh, northwest of the Arabian Sea and uh, we're going to be uh, taking off uh, you, uh, our call sign is waypoints aviation 320 our alternate airport today is Oscar Tango Hotel Hotel which is Doha which is just before Bahrain we're expecting to be flying at a cruising level of flight level 310 the ground temperature today is 33 degrees Celsius now on the flight plan page you can see that it's gonna take us uh, taking off from runway 30 left uh, and we'll make a right hand turn and then we're going to be following the Nabix 3 Foxtrot SID outbound now the SID is going to take us on a normal route but when you have an engine failure, every airline has their own procedure, uh, depending on the type of aircraft they're flying, depending on the equipment and everything, and the airport and the surroundings of the airport. An airline publishes their own engine out SID, EOSID, or as we, as we like to call it.
So the procedure that I'm gonna follow today is if there's a failure after takeoff, I'm gonna do no actions until 400 feet with the exception of silencing any cautions that may be uh, blaring in the cockpit right at the time and retracting the landing gear, all right? So that's the only thing I'm gonna do until 400 feet. And I'm gonna be working to stabilize the aircraft at 400, by, by 400 feet so I can get the, so I'm gonna trim the rudder and stabilize the aircraft with the, with the dead engine still on it, trying to make sure that the aircraft is flying effectively, properly, and then I can get the autopilot on. And then once I get the autopilot on, we're gonna, climb, we're gonna continue climbing and I'm gonna ask the pilot monitoring to identify the failure and then secure the engine. Now, when it comes to securing the aircraft engine, what we wanna do is there's two ways to secure the, an Airbus A320 uh, engine. So engine secured is, is when for example, if there's an engine failure, okay, engine number one, engine number two, whatever has failed. If the engine, if the engine still has some rotation on the N1, on the N2, uh, then it's possible that this is just, it, the engine has just shut down for whatever reason, and we can possibly relight the engine in the air. And I'm gonna try and show you that later on. But if the engine has completely failed, like the engine has damaged, has, has uh, incurred some damage during the failure, then you will not see any rotation on the N1 because with the wind coming in, at least the blades are supposed to be spinning. But if they're not spinning, then they won't be generating any N1 rotations, neither any N2 rotations, like the blades are stuck. And that would be a good indication that this engine is damaged. All right. So, in the event that the air, the engine is not damaged, we will we will consider the engine secured when the pilot monitoring shuts off the engine master switch. All right. They're going to be around here during the time of takeoff. So, let's just say engine 1 failed and there is no damage. I still see some rotation. I still see some rotation on N1 and N2. Then I'm going to say the engine's not damaged and I'm just going to secure the engine by confirming which is the which is the affected engine and pulling the master switch back to normal back to off I'm sorry and that is going to and then I'm going to and then the pilot monitoring calls out engine secured all right and then we can go on with the rest of the procedure try to relight the engine and potentially bring the aircraft back in for a safe landing now if the engine is not secured um, in the sense that if there's damage, there's no N1, no N2, no fuel flow, you clearly understand that the engine has failed and is damaged, then the engine secure could be when you pull the switch to off and then you have to come to the top here, identify which engine on the engine fire panel and you're going to lift, push this button out and fire a squib because if there was damage as potentially it could be a fire as well so you fire the squib and then once that's that's fired and you do not see a firelight over here then you can say engine secured all right so with without damage engine is secured when you pull the engine master switch to off with damage the engine is secured after pushing the fire button and firing a squib or two squibs as required that's the difference okay so uh that's what i'm going to show to you today so uh let me set up the cockpit and uh taxi us down towards the runway and we will get going with the rest of the video stay tuned a few moments later all right here we are we're on the runway, uh, runway 30 left in Dubai Airport. We're lined up. Uh, all uh, before takeoff checks have been completed. Strobe lights are on, landing lights are on, seat belts are si signs are on. Uh, the uh, takeoff memo is all uh, is green, no blue. Everything is ready for takeoff. Uh, we've got the initial climb altitude set, 4,000 feet. And we're about to take off and follow the Navix 3 Foxtrot. So, a quick uh, takeoff brief. So, in case of any failure, 
before 100 knots, I will close the truss levers, engage full reversers, and pilot monitoring is going to observe that the auto brakes are slowing the aircraft down and that we are decelerating. And then contact the tower, tell them we're stopping on the runway, and then uh, we'll get back to them with our intentions. Uh, if any failure happens after V1, which is 149 knots, then obviously we're going airborne. I will, uh, I will continue to rotate the aircraft, and uh, at positive rate, the uh, the first officer will retract the landing gear. So in case it's an engine failure, no actions until 400 feet with the exception of landing gear retraction and silencing any caution bells that could be uh, blaring in the cockpit at the time. At 400 feet, I'll attempt to get the autopilot on and with the aircraft under my control and my communications, I will call for the pilot monitoring to do the ECAM actions, identify the problem and follow any procedures that could be. The engine out SID would be to fly runway heading, which will be um, 299 degrees, track straight ahead for about 20 miles, and then we're gonna make a left-hand turn and come to egg map. And uh, at egg map, we're going to go into a hold at 3000 feet until we've secured the uh, aircraft, finished all our checklists, and then we, we are probably going to come back to Dubai International Airport because uh, we've got maintenance right over there and we've got the terminal there so we can make onboard arrangements for all our passengers. So that's the briefing for the engine out procedure. So uh, let's get going, shall we? First thing we're gonna do is get the parking brake off and we're going to advance the truss levers to 50%, make sure both engines are spooling up together and once we have that we're gonna go for flex two clicks in and read IFMA man flex 68 SRS runway auto trust blue all right that's good tracking the center line pilot monitoring looks at the engine and says takeoff trust is set which means we've achieved the takeoff trust we need to get off the ground pilot monitoring says checked Next thing we're gonna do is look at the airspeed. Pilot monitoring calls 100 knots. I'll say check, that's part of flying. Continuing to keep the aircraft nice and straight and level. Down the end of the runway. Okay, there's V1. Okay, I just heard a bang. Something's happened to the aircraft. I'm using the rudders to keep her in the center line. Rotate. We're gonna keep center line, do not be in a hurry to rotate the aircraft, maintain center line and then rotate on that center line using the rudders to keep yourself coordinated. Okay, we've got a positive rate of climb, nicely following the SRS, positive rate, gear up, the aircraft is climbing away, gear is retracting, We're gonna make sure we follow the SRS accurately so that we don't lose any airspeed. It's very critical at this point that we keep it coordinated. I'm going to trim the rudder to the good engine side so that I don't have to apply too much rudder anymore. So as we, as we trim, I'm going to make sure it stays coordinated. And then if it's well coordinated, I can get the autopilot going autopilot on and the aircraft is now going to continue climbing away we're gonna set runway heading 299 er pilot monitoring will call out master caution engine one failure and now we're just gonna make sure the aircraft is climbing away and now we've got 400 feet so I'm gonna say my control my communications identify so pilot monitoring is gonna go okay engine one failure and I'm gonna call for ECAM actions while he's going to do the ECAM actions I'm gonna very quickly call up Dubai okay Dubai uh, tower pan 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 waypoints aviation 320 we've had an engine failure uh, maintaining runway track and uh, we will call you back with our intentions so that should be enough for them to clear the airspace for us now as we climb away and I make sure that the aircraft is not losing speed and maintaining a steady climb what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna say alright ECAM action so now pilot monitoring is gonna say engine one 
failure okay the ecam actions are the engine mode selector needs to go to ignition so we come down here pilot monitoring goes engine mode selector and puts it into ignition all right now the next item is trust lever number one to idle that's the affected engine so pilot monitoring puts his hand on the affected engine and says confirm number one pilot monitoring confirms that it is the number one trust lever and the pilot monitoring brings it back to idle and then the next item would be engine master number one to off pilot monitoring puts his hand on the engine number one master switch confirm it's number one pilot monitoring will confirm that it is indeed engine number one because you don't want to shut down the good engine and goes off now we look if damage now here's where we get to assess if you look at the n1 there is no n1 there's no n2 there's no fuel flow this engine is not even windmilling so this is definitely damaged so the uh, so if there's damage engine fire one push button to push so pilot monitoring will now go to the top confirm engine number one fire push button pilot monitoring will confirm it pilot uh, pilot monitoring will then lift and say push that will arm the squibs and now we're going to fire squib number one and then once it's fired and we don't see any fire indication here now pilot monitoring will declare engine secured okay so now that the engine is secured as pilot uh, as pilot flying i'm going to say okay stop ecam actions and i'm going to push to level off so that we can now con focus on accelerating the aircraft and cleaning because we still got the flaps going so we want to clean up the aircraft so we've got vs0 the aircraft is leveling out at 2000 we're over the arabian sea right now so no terrain to uh, concern us at the moment and we want to accelerate to the S speed so that we can now clean up this aircraft and get it more streamlined. So we're just waiting for that to happen. Should happen within the next 10 seconds according to our speed trend. I'm gonna clear this caution over here. Waiting for that speed to come up. We're actually quite heavy today. We've got a gross weight of 63,800 kilos, 63 tons. So we're pretty heavy today. So we need to uh, we need to accelerate and make sure that uh, this aircraft stays in the air. So as we accelerate, there we go, here comes the acceleration. We're now at S speed, so we can now go flaps zero, disarm the speed brakes, put the outer lights off, and now that I've got the S speed and the and the flaps are in the aircraft is in clean configuration now we're gonna wait for green dot which is our minimum clean speed at that I'm gonna set 3000 which is the altitude I want to climb to and pull and now we want to go to flex MCT we come here and go to MCT on the in good on the good engine we've got trust MCT open climb 3000 the aircraft is now climbing away to 3,000 feet and what we also want to do now is we want to go to egg map and hold so we're gonna go direct to I'm gonna put E G M A P and I'm gonna put it in there and I'm going to insert it now as we go there as we head over to egg map I want to then go into a hold at egg map And once I'm in the hold, then I can continue with the ECAM actions. Well, now that we're climbing away, everything's secured, and we're we're, climb, we're flying over to our uh, holding point. Now I can tell him continue ECAM actions. So we're gonna clear the top message if no damage. All right. Now this is the engine shutdown items. If no fuel leak, imbalance monitor. So we're gonna. We're going to monitor the imbalance. We'll bring up the fuel page. And as you can see, we've got 3,400 here, 3,200 here. Slight imbalance, but not too bad. So we can, we're okay for now. All right. After that, TCAS mode to TA. We come over to the transponder and we put it into TA mode. Okay. And as you do these items, it clears them off. All right. 
If there's a buffet, maximum speed should be 240 knots. We're maintaining just uh, just a little bit over 210, so we're okay. Cross bleed should be shut. So we come up here and we go cross bleed shut. And then clear, ECAM actions, call by the pilot monitoring. Pilot flying says, okay, clear. And now we're gonna go into secondary failures. All right, so now what we wanna do is we are going to read out the secondary failures. So secondary failures is land ASAP in amber. It's amber because it's not too bad. And it's also, if it was red, we would need to land immediately. But it's land ASAP amber. And the first item is air bleed. As you can see, there is no air bleed coming from engine number one, but we've got air bleed from engine number two. That's fine. We're gonna, so I'm gonna say clear air bleed. He's gonna clear it. Next comes up the electrical page. And as you can see, Gen generator number one, which is connected to engine number one, is offline. But generator number two is carrying the load and delivering in enough power. But we can do that by starting the APU. So pilot monitoring will go ahead and push start and then press start again to start the APU so that once the APU kicks in, the APU will carry the load for AC1 while Gen 2 takes care of AC2. So that takes care of our electrical problem. Clear the electrics, clear it. Hydraulics, we've got low pressure from the number one side, which is driven by the engine number one. But with engine number two, via the PTU, it's providing enough hydraulic pressure to all three systems. So we're good to go. Clear the hydraulics, we're gonna clear that. That brings us up to the status page. Now the status page, I'm gonna say stop status. And then I'm gonna ask the pilot monitoring, do we have any OEBs? Do we have any computer resets that we can do? Any checklists that we need to do? He says, no, we're actually pretty much done with all of that. So then I can tell him, okay, continue status. Now he's gonna read the status to me. He says, avoid icing conditions, not a problem for us today, if severe ice, uh, accretion minimum speed should be the VLS plus 10 on the green dot maneuver with care landing distance procedures will apply if no engine one damage consider engine one relight cat three single capability only all right so that's the current status of the aircraft the inoperative systems that we've lost due to this engine failure is we've lost the wing anti-ice cat three dual engine one bleed pack one is offline generator number one is offline and the green engine one hydraulic pump is offline. That's okay, we've got plenty of backups to take care of us. Let's remove the status. And basically that's it. We've now taken care of the engine failure. As you can see, trust lever number one is at idle, the engine is off, we've pushed the fire button and fired a squib, so we've isolated that engine and we're Basically, we're flying comfortably right now using engine number two only. The aircraft is in clean configuration. We've radioed with the uh, ATC and told them that what we want to do. So now we're going to make a plan uh, to come back. So at this point, the closest airport to us is Dubai International Airport. And as we briefed, we prefer to come back to Dubai International Airport because we've got a maintenance facility there. And since we departed from there, we can actually make onward arrangements to uh, to the passengers to you know get on the next flight and uh, get to their destination so now we're gonna radio in contact Dubai and tell them our intentions that we want to turn around now and come back to Dubai International Airport for a landing and um, and they're obviously they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna accommodate us so they're gonna say all right expect an ILS for runway 30 right via vectors so they're going to vector us now towards runway 30 right so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to hand over control and communication to the first officer uh, to my pilot monitoring he's going to fly the aircraft and he's also going to do communication while i essentially prepare the box to bring us back now what we did on the secondary flight plan was we actually made a secondary flight plan that would bring us back to dubai runway 30 right in case of this uh, in case this happened and as you can see there it is right there so now it's pretty much set up so what I want to do now is I want to go secondary flight plan and I'm going to activate it now the primary flight plan 
is taking me to runway 30 right okay and um, now what we can do is we're going to go to performance we're going to go to the next phase next phase again one more time and all these parameters need to be filled out our Q and H today is 1013 temperature is 33 degrees winds are 271 at 11 knots and I'm gonna check the charts and I'm gonna fill in the barrel reference today uh, which is going to be 261 if I'm not uh, mistaken I'll, I'll correct it again uh, after I've checked the chart and and that basically secures us to come back to Dubai so we've still got a bad engine now what we can do is I'm taking back control pilot monitoring has communications again and we're gonna fly the aircraft as normal so let's assume Dubai says okay turn right to a heading of 180 degrees maintain 3000 uh, for vectors to an ILS to run with 30 right so I've got 180 degrees there we're in heading mode we're flying to 180 degrees and we're basically making the turn to head back towards Dubai International Airport we're just over the coastline of uh, Dubai so it's not going to be long before we get there so I'm going to get back to you when we come back uh, again for our approach all right so here we are we're making our way back towards Dubai Airport we have got a heading of 210 degrees which is going to take us towards a right hand downwind of runway 30 right once we get to about three miles away from the airport we're going to make a left hand turn to a heading of uh, 120 degrees to fly the downwind and then we're going to go up to a waypoint which is called Lowell and from Lowell we're going to make the turn and we're going to come right around and uh, uh, join the approach for the ILS so this is going to be an ILS approach so we're going to get the ILS going right over there maintaining 3000 heading 310 degrees all confirmed right there and looking at the chart so I've got the chart for ILS 30 right right there and as you can see I was actually wrong the minimums is 233 so I want to come back down here in the performance page go to next phase find the approach phase and change this to 233 there we go that is now changed and uh, basically we're good to go now the next thing is if I come back to the flight plan page you can say it says 51 miles because I've got a lot of this jargon in here I need to clean this up the first waypoint or rather the final approach fix is Delta Bravo 759 that's when we're gonna start the approach to uh, runway 30 right so I want to put that as the next uh, waypoint in sequence so all I gotta do is come over here go to the direct to page find Delta Bravo 759 press it and I'm gonna give an inbound radial of 119 degrees and it's gonna draw a nice straight line from the runway all the way down and I'm going to insert it and now I'm gonna pull the heading to make sure the aircraft stays in heading mode and we're just basically now if you see it's just from 50 it's now 22 miles so we actually have an accurate distance to um, to to our approach and landing so we've got the ILS going we've got all of that going we've uh, we've fed in all the details that the aircraft needs uh, on the approach page so now we're just basically going to be uh, flying along making sure that uh, we can do this approach and uh, to brief the approach as you can see it's uh, the frequency is 110 decimal niner and that is confirmed right over there final course is 2990 degrees which is confirmed on the RADNAV page as well and the uh, approach starts at 3000 feet and it's a 3 degree descent down to minimums of 233 uh, two, and in case of missed approach the procedure is climb direct to Delta Bravo 755 then on track 314 to Delta Bravo 756 at 4000 we then turn left on track to Egnot and hold at 4000 feet so that's going to be the go around procedure because we are actually going to be doing a single engine go around in the Airbus and uh, there's the city of Dubai coming in the distance in, into view 
I can see the airport, we're getting close to three miles. So now I wanna turn left, do a heading of one, two, zero degrees to fly downwind. There we go, one, two, zero set, one, two, zero confirmed. We're in heading mode, the aircraft is turning. And as you can see, we are also turning to the left to fly downwind. And then when we're a beam Delta Bravo 759, we're gonna turn and intercept it and intercept the ILS and bring this in for the approach. So I'll get back to you again when we are making the turn. For now, what I wanna do is, since I am 17 miles, getting close to 15 miles um, from our from the uh, from the uh, uh, from the landing, what I want to do is I want to go to performance, and I'm going to activate the approach phase now, so that the aircraft basically goes into approach mode. And what he wants to do, it's going to maintain the green dot speed, but keep me slow enough that I can start deploying my flaps. All right, I'll get back to you when I am a beam Delta Bravo 759 and ready to start the approach. So far, so good. Oh, by the way, I also have given um, a briefing to the passengers and apologize for the engine failure. And uh, so they're calm for now. We give them some extra peanuts and some drinks. So they should be all right. One eternity later. All right, we're coming up a beam Delta Bravo 759. We're at 3000 feet. I can see the glide slopes in there, localizers in there as well. So what I want to do is I'm going to call for flaps one now. Pilot monitoring does a speed check and goes flaps one. We've got our flaps. Now every time you change configuration, the status page is going to come up. We check, make sure there's no changes and we're going to remove the status, clear the status page. It will keep coming up as we change. We're going to be using auto brakes low for the landing. So I'm arming that now and I want to go right now straight to Delta Bravo 6. Uh, 759 so to do that all I have to do is come to the direct to page find Delta Bravo 759 aircraft creates an intercept point and I'm going to insert now the aircraft goes into nav mode and it's gonna start its turn towards Delta Bravo 759 as I'm starting the turn towards uh, Delta Bravo 759 uh, let's assume that ATC has cleared me in for the approach for the ILS So since they cleared me for the full ILS, I'm gonna arm the approach and I'm gonna arm the second autopilot And that's gonna give me cat 3 single autopilot 1 plus 2 Which means and lock and GS in blue, which means the aircraft now is basically searching for the localizer and glide slope and as soon as it captures it it's going to uh, basically follow the localizer. It's coming to a range of localizer. We've got lock star. So the aircraft now is in the process of capturing the localizer. You're gonna see the localizer come in from left to right. And once it comes here, we should see lock again, which means it's confirmed that it's locked onto the localizer. Waiting for that to happen. And everything seems to be okay. We can also, at this point, we can do an approach checklist. So the approach checklist, uh, the pilot monitoring will read the items on the left while the pilot flying uh, reads the items on the right. So barrel reference, 1013 set on both sides and the standby. Seatbelt signs are on, just to make sure. And, uh, oh, by the way, lock. We've now captured the localizer. We're heading straight for the runway. Continue with the checklist. Minimums, we've got 233 three set. Auto brakes, low. And uh, engine mode selector is currently ignition start. So that completes the approach checklist. Next one would be the landing checklist. So for now, the aircraft has the aircraft has indeed captured the localizer. We're heading straight for the localizer. It's a pretty cloudy and hazy day in Dubai today. Uh, expecting rain as well, so hmm, we'll see. Glide slope is coming in. I'm gonna request for flaps two. Here comes flaps two, clearing all those messages. There's flaps two, selected and indicating. Boom, you got it. Glide slope star, so landing gear comes down and I can request now flaps three. Gonna arm the speed brakes 
get the lights on, get onto the PA, cabin crew be seated for landing, thank you. And now we're on the glide slope, glide slope start change to glide slope which means we can now set the go around altitude which is 4000 for runway 30 right in Dubai. Gears down and three green lights, flaps are at three, speed brakes are armed, so far so good. And now that we're coming down, I'm going to wait for 2,000 feet. I'm going to request flaps full, followed by the landing checklist. So we're descending nicely. Everything looks good. The uh, truss levers, by the way, are in flex MCT mode, not climb, because that's what we need to maintain this aircraft um, steady. We need uh, maximum continuous thrust to make sure that the, we get enough thrust to, to keep the aircraft flying. I can actually see the airport coming into view. Got a bit of a crosswind going today. So waiting for 2000 and then I will get my landing memo and I will be able to go for flaps full and landing checklist. 2000. Okay, there's 2000. Here we go, we got the landing memo. So flaps full please. Pilot uh, monitoring says speed check. Goes for flaps full. And now what we're gonna do is landing checklist. The landing checklist is ECAM memo, landing no blue. It is landing no blue. So, landing checklist complete. Dubai Airport has cleared us to continue with the approach. We're coming in. Now, for the sake of uh, the tutorial on this video, at, at minimums, which is 233, I'm gonna engage a go around. Now, the good thing about the Airbus is the go around can be fully automated. That's the beauty of this, this aircraft. It really helps you out. So. The go around procedure is I will simply, because I've got 4000 in there, I will advance the trust lever to TOGA, which is takeoff go around power, and I will call go around. After that, the pilot monitoring will say check and he will, and I will also call for go around flaps. The pilot monitoring will then move the flaps from full to one position up, which is flaps three. And as we accelerate and cross the green F, then we're gonna go flaps one and then we're just gonna clean up on schedule as, as required. All right, so that's what's gonna happen right now. I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys. So I've got the runway in sight and it would be so nice to land, but um, yeah, I gotta do a go around. So no worries, it's fun. Let's, uh, let's keep it going. So we've just crossed 1000, coming in. In fact, our speed, our winds now are a little bit more nastier than usual. It's 276 at 22 knots, not 11 knots. Um, yeah, no worries. We still got the runway inside coming in. Looking good. Keeping my hand on the truss lever, ready. Left hand on the side stick. And uh, the, the tray table is supposed to be stored. Uh, during takeoff and landing. I'm keeping it on just for the sake of tutorial because I need my iPad for the uh, stuff. But yeah, ignore that part. Anyway, here we go, coming in, 500, 500. feet. That's checked, runway in sight. There's the airport. There's downtown Dubai in the distance, Burj Khalifa oh. right there. 400, coming in. Everything's looking good. At minimums, so we're gonna engage. Hundred above, we got land. Minimum. Minimum. Go around. Toga, man toga, SRS go around track, auto trust blue. And uh, first officer is gonna say, all right, go around flaps please. He's gonna say speed check and he's gonna go one flap up. Aircraft, is, we're gonna make sure the aircraft is climbing away. We got a positive rate of climb, landing gear up. Okay. Landing gear is in transition, speed is clock, the altitude's climbing, the aircraft is climbing away. And the aircraft is gonna follow the go-around track as published in the thing. Once you get to F speed. Once you get to the F speed, then we're basically going to um, we're gonna go to flaps one and then clean up the aircraft, turn around, come back and do a single engine landing. I'll get back to you when we're on approach for the single engine landing. More moments later. Alrighty, so 
we uh, we did the go around we uh, cleaned up the aircraft uh, we're a flap zero again we're maintaining our green dot speed which is our minimum clean speed we have turned to a right hand downwind for runway 30 right again climbing up to 3,000 feet and uh, basically we're just sequencing the um, sequencing that flight plan again so that we uh, you know so that uh, all the waypoints are correct and once we're a beam Delta Bravo 759 we're gonna make the turn back again and reattempt to land the aircraft so that's how you do a go-around uh, procedure a single engine go-around in the aircraft uh, you go one notch up so we were at flaps four we went to flaps three and as soon as we saw F speed and we crossed the green F on the uh, speed tape we then went to flaps one directly and then once we got to the S we went to flaps up and cleaned up the aircraft and now the aircraft was secured climbing up to 3,000 feet and uh, basically now we're gonna start the turn once again so performance activate the approach phase one more time there we go maintaining green dot speed coming the beam uh, our final approach fix very soon and then we're going to do a full stop landing and this one will be manual flight I'll get back to you once uh, we're just on final approach Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the finale of the video and thank you for sticking around <laughs> up until now. So, I'm on final approach, uh, I'm on the localizer, on the glide slope, everything's looking good, aircraft's tracking straight towards the runway, coming up on 1,000 feet very soon. 1,000. There it is, 1,000 is checked, landing memo, all green, no blue, so the landing checklist is completed go around altitude is set so all there's left to do now is simply disconnect the autopilot and uh, hand fly this guy uh, down to the runway so here we go two pushes on the autopilot autopilot off cat one and we're just going to use the side stick to maintain our SRS which is the flight directors making sure the aircraft is stable as you can see it's very very little input required uh, to maintain um, the uh, the control of the aircraft thus is the Airbus it's so easy so we've got 500 feet coming in on uh, the runway here Four. land on the FMA so we're committed now go ahead with the landing 100 above Hundred above. Slight crosswind, so I'll have to decrab the aircraft once I touch down. Minimum two. Minimums continue. There we go. Let's bring her in over there. One hundred. Fifty. Okay, here we go. 30, 20, retard. Retard. Engines to idle. Touchdown. Using the rudders to keep us stable. Full reverses selected on the on the river on the truss levers. Okay, we got reverses green on engine number two and spoilers are deployed. And we have deceleration. Seventy knots, idle thrust, back to idle again, and pushing the brakes, disconnecting, and we can now plan to exit at the next uh, at the next uh, exit off the runway. And that, my friends, is a single engine landing in the Airbus A320, and that was also how we do a single engine go around. So I'm just going to stop the aircraft on the runway and set the parking brakes. So that is how we do a single engine uh, operation on the Airbus A320. So remember one thing, the three rules of aviation, aviate, navigate, communicate, all right? That is very important. So as soon as the engine fails, the first thing you want to do is continue flying the aircraft. So keep using the rudders 
as required to maintain center line of the runway. Do not, a lot of pilots, because they heard the word rotate from the pilot monitoring, they want to be in a hurry to rotate and pull the aircraft up in the air. But what you want to do is you want to make sure you are maintaining center line and properly coordinated with the rudders and then you rotate on that and it will be easy for you as you get off the ground and onwards yeah, into the air. And and, uh, and, and and basically after that just follow the procedures as we showed you and then you can bring the aircraft in for a safe landing. So that's how you do that. Hope you found it useful. If you've got any comments uh, please please do so in, in the section below and um, if you want to learn how to do the secondary flight plan which you saw me doing earlier I've got a link in the description below for you and you can also check out the the channel for any other videos you might find uh, useful so thank you so much for tuning in today that's it from us uh, stay tuned for more tutorial videos coming up please uh, like subscribe and share this video with uh, anybody you think might be useful. Thank you so much and you guys have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.